Hi and welcome to another quick video tutorial. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how to get started with the mate tile and uh, create your first uh, 3D printed uh, dungeon tile. Um, again it's going to be a pretty short one, um, I'm just going to show you the very basics and then uh, over the next few videos uh, I'll go into much more detail on each of the options and the different dungeon tiles. Um, I've also put up the first video in what's going to be a series on making a dungeon from scratch using mate tile and that will go uh, through quite a lot of the options as well. Um, if you've not used Blender before uh, you can uh, see the previous two videos on my YouTube channel which are about um, downloading and installing mate tile and then the basics of navigating around the user interface. Okay, so launch Blender and uh, it will come up with this splash screen. Uh, just click anywhere in empty space to get rid of it. Um, okay, so first thing we can do is we're going to delete the default objects. I'm just going to click and drag uh, and then press delete to get rid of them. And I'm going to bring up the side menu, which is where MakeTile lives, by pressing N. Uh, and uh, this will bring up this menu. It's got little tabs which have got a few different options, uh, but we're just going to stick in this MakeTile menu. Uh, the aim of MakeTile is it should be uh, usable by someone who's got no Blender experience. So pretty much everything you need to do, or 99% of what you need to do, uh, you can do from this one menu. Um, and it's going to create different options as we, as we go through it. Um, so I'm going to uh, sort of start with uh, just leave these at the default, except I'm going to change this material um, to a, a regular stone block material. Uh, click on Make Tile. And it's going to uh, make a little 2x2 two two, uh, open lock compatible um, tile. So it's got little sockets in the side and it's got little sockets on the base um, which you can use to sort of clip these tiles together. Um, there's two other sort of tile types as it were uh, that you can use in uh, make tile. Uh, so currently there are plain ones and if we just do that, then you can see that uh, this is just a, a plain tile which has got no sockets or whatever in it. Um, you can also create a, a custom tile and uh, this will allow you to uh, choose the sort of the base type and the main bit of the tile. So you can have a uh, open lock base, but a plain sort of main bit. Um, so we've got the sockets in the base, but we don't have any sockets in the side on this one. Um, so I'm going to get rid of these two tiles. Rather than pressing delete, uh, there's a little delete tiles option up here. Um, so you always want to use this when you're working with make tile uh, because each of these tiles is made up of uh, several different meshes. Um, so you've got the uh, sort of the main uh, bit of the tile and the base mesh but on say the open lock tiles you've also got, they're not visible but you've got uh, other meshes which uh, are used for creating um, the sockets and stuff. Uh, so you want to always use this uh, delete tiles option um, and that will delete everything and will stop you uh, having sort of different uh, meshes hanging around in your scene and potentially slowing Blender down. Um, so I'm going to press Shift and S uh, and snap the cursor back to the world origin. Um, so you can customize the size of these tiles um, depending on uh, what uh, tile type you've got selected. Uh, you can change different options. So this is a triangular floor tile. Uh, you can change the uh, the sort of the base uh, angle of this. So if I uh, change that to uh, I don't know 75 degrees or something then click on make tile it will create a triangular tile which has got a 75 degree base angle um, but if it's a 90 degrees then it'll just be like that uh, you can also you know change the the length of each side um, okay and uh, I'm just going to go back to the straight wall tile. So we've got our regular stone blocks. Uh, tile X uh, is 2, Z is 2. So this is going to create a standard 2x2 two two open lock tile. Uh, currently it doesn't look like there's any materials or whatever applied to it. Uh, so to see what is uh, on this tile, we need to go over here and click on Create Lighting Setup. And this is going to uh, sort of set up our scene in the background. It's going to switch us over to the Cycles Render Engine. 
um, and that's Blender's non-real-time renderer which will uh, allow you to uh, see the texture and see the displacement. Um, because it's a non-real-time renderer uh, it does take a while to work to update uh, when you move it around um, depending on whether you've got a you know a decent GPU or whatever this will be faster or slower uh, if you don't have a separate GPU it will just use a CPU and uh, that will go a bit slower but you know on, on most modern computers it should be fine um, so there's also a uh, another render engine in Blender which is the EV render engine so you can just swap between them uh, and this is the one which I use for designing different materials and applying different materials uh, because it's a real-time uh, renderer and it uh, updates quickly uh, but unfortunately it doesn't currently do uh, real-time displacement um, might do in the future but at the moment it doesn't uh, so sometimes you do have to use cycles right so um, even when it's in cycles mode at the moment, uh, it's uh, this sort of uh, texture is just being calculated in the shader, so it's not actually real geometry. Um, so if I were to export this tile uh, normally uh, through sort of the file export options, um, you just end up with the uh, the flat tile that we saw at the start. So in order to uh, export it with this uh, displacement texture. Um, applied. I want to go over and uh, make sure the tile is selected and click on Make 3D. Uh, Blender's then going to think for a moment and uh, it's going to basically turn this into a proper 3D object. I'm just going to switch back over to the viewport renderer which is the simplest and fastest uh, renderer in uh, Blender. Um, so you can see this is quite low resolution at the moment, uh, it hasn't picked up all of the detail um, so to correct that uh, I'm going to turn the subdivisions up to uh, 7. The reason it's 6 by default is just so I can swap backwards and forwards uh, between the 3D tile and the uh, 2D tile which is quite useful especially when you've got uh, lots of tiles in your scene um, and you want to sort of do tweaks to uh, like the amount which it juts out and things like that. Okay so this is um, our tile, this is now real geometry and we can just export this out and um, that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to go down to the export option um, I'm going to turn off randomize. Uh, here you've got the export path, uh, which is uh, just by default, it creates a little uh, make tile um, folder in your uh, user folder. I'm just going to uh, click on export tile. Blender's going to uh, think for a, I don't know, a few seconds uh, while it exports, um, just because it's creating the STLs and the STL exporter isn't, you know, hugely fast in Blender. Um, at some point, I'll implement uh, the obj or um, wavefront object renderer uh, exporter, which is a bit faster. Um, but for now, it's just using STLs, which are, you know, universally accepted. Um, but yeah, it does take a few seconds to export them. So um, I'm going to, uh, you don't need to do this yourself, you don't need to know about this really, um, but I'm just going to go up here and create a new scene um, and then I am going to uh, import the uh, tile which I just created. Uh, so I'm going to go File, Import, uh, STL and I am going to uh, find my, uh, where are we? Do, do, do. I'm going to find my uh, folder. Um, I'm just going to uh, sort that by uh, creation date, and you can see that uh, here's the here's the um, the file which I just exported, there's also some which I was playing around with earlier, you can see that the size of it is really quite big and uh, I'll sort that out in a moment. Uh, but I'm just going to import that for now and uh, again wait a second while uh, Blender imports things and it's going to import my tile and my tile is now going to be huge. 
Um, and the reason it's huge is that uh, when it was exported, um, the exporter changed the scale uh, from sort of the blender unit scale uh, to inches. So when you import this into your uh, slicer um, for 3D printing, it will be the right size. Um, it's just that the scale is different to blender's scale. Um, so there we have our tile. And if I uh, tab into edit mode uh, to have a look at it, you can see that it's made up of, uh, you know, lots and lots of vertices and uh, it's really quite a heavy mesh. Um, so what I want to do when uh, exporting a tile is I actually want to voxelize it. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to go back to my original scene. And you can see how small the tile is uh, in the scene compared to the uh, exported one. I'm just going to focus it by pressing uh, period on the numpad. And uh, this time I'm going to uh, voxelize my tile before I export it. It's going to slow things down a little bit. Um, but what the voxelize option does is it takes the uh, mesh and it uh, reconstructs it using voxels which are lots and lots of tiny little cubes um, and then it builds a mesh around that and then it simplifies that mesh um, and by doing that uh, it will create a much smaller file um, the settings which I've got it on will mean that we will lose some detail um, but I'm not particularly worried about that because this is a 2x2 two two tile so it's very small and uh, losing that detail is not going to actually affect it when we print it out. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the oops, go back to the other scene and I am going to import uh, that new tile. And you can see that now it's uh, four megabytes rather than being 83 megabytes. So if I import that, zoom out you can see that we've still got you know some texture and stuff it's a bit more simplified um, but I think that's you know a decent quality for printing out uh, especially on an FDM printer um, if you do print it out on a resin printer they still come out really good um, to be honest with you, you can't really see this uh, these sort of you know um, uh, tessellation um, I can't believe it, I've forgotten what they're called, the triangles. <laughs> um, so if I go into edit mode this time, you can see how much this has been simplified. So it's preserved the detail in the cracks, but it's uh, simplified the flat bits. Um, so that's what voxelizing the tile does. Um, right, so polygons, that's the word. Right, 15 years of using a graphics program. I couldn't remember the poly word polygon. Right, okay, so I'm gonna uh, switch back to the scene and I'm gonna zoom back in on my tile. Uh, when you export style, um, it sort of, you know, it keeps it keeps the original in the scene so it doesn't get rid of this. Uh, so at any point we can just uh, click on return to preview and it will, uh, you know, return it to our our basic tile, which is in uh, which we can see in EV or we can see in uh, cycles. Right, so the last thing I want to show you in this video is uh, the randomize function. So I'm just going to go on to Eevee again. Um, and uh, what this does is it uh, generates random variants of a tile. Um, so if I turn that up to, say, uh, 4, and then uh, click on uh, Export Tile, um, and keep the voxelize option, then Blender is going to uh, think about it and uh, export several tiles, um, four tiles with this texture, but each tile is going to be slightly different. Um, currently, there aren't uh, status bars implemented with make tile. Um, I'm, I'm told this is actually possible in Blender, um, which is interesting because I've never seen it before in any add-on, um, and I've used dozens, hundreds over the years, but apparently you can put status bars in, which will uh, show you whether or not Blender has frozen. Because what usually happens is that Blender will display this not responding message. If you click on it, it looks like it's crashed. Um, it hasn't, it's just working away in the background. Um, so if I bring up the, um, uh, the folder where I'm exporting these tiles to, um, then you'll be able to see as it creates each new tile and um, that they'll pop up here just to sort of reassure yourself that uh, Blender is actually working away in the background and hasn't completely crashed. Um, yeah, I, I really wish Blender 
sort of gave a bit more feedback on this um, but unfortunately it doesn't so there we go um, it does take about I don't know uh, 30 seconds to a minute to um, export each variant at the moment um, I've speeded that up as much as I can um, it actually took quite a lot longer than that previously um, once I in, um, once I implement the object exporter hopefully that will speed up a lot more um, but when it does generate these variants it has to go through a sort of quite an involved process of uh, generating a new texture and then uh, doing what's called baking um, and making that into a, a 3d texture and displacing the mesh so it's never going to be like instant and quick it's always going to take a few seconds um, to be honest with you usually when you're exporting lots of things you sort of you know just want to go and have a cup of tea or something or do something else in the background um, so I'm just going to speed it up while it uh, generates its last little tile. Yay! There we go. Right. So we are. It's exported those uh, these four variants, and it hasn't actually crashed. So it is back to uh, its usual self. So I'm just going to uh, pop over to uh, the other scene, and I am going to uh, go on to the viewport renderer. And I'm just going to import uh, those four new uh, tiles. I'm just going to drag them out. Okay, that's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so you can see that uh, basically what we've done is uh, we've generated different variants so you can see that easily with the cracks uh, so there's a crack here there's a crack there um, that one's not got any cracks that's got a crack uh, that one's got a crack uh, this tile also has um, some of the blocks uh, you know you are split in half and that kind of thing and this is quite nice it just means that um, your dungeon doesn't end up you know looking exactly the same um, you don't get that sort of annoying repetitive uh, thing so uh, that's all I'm going to show you uh, in this particular video I think I'm at 15 minutes or something which is quite long enough um, if you want to see more options as I say there's a uh, a video that's the first in a series of videos about uh, creating a dungeon from scratch um, which are on this channel um, and I'll be adding some more videos exploring some of the uh, more advanced options in make tile uh, how to change materials and customize them um, and the different tile types and some of the options which go with those um, so that's going to be over the next few days um, I'm sort of off work this week so I can uh, do that and uh, yes I shall see you again soon